In chapter four, we're going to take a look at the individual exercise five, creating a template, uh, ramp four in uh, the ORD road one class uh, has two different templates that we utilize for ramp four. And so we've got one with a curb and gutter, which we did in exercise four. And so in exercise five, we're going to do the other template that we need, which is the ramp for pavement with shoulders. Okay, and everything's basically the same as exercise four, except for we're going to be doing shoulders. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to go into our drawing. Um, the drawing I'm opening up is, is going to be the civil geometry for uh, our project. <laughs> And then I'm going to open up the template library, which is our J5P3181ITL. Then I'm going to go into the folder that we created for the project, and there should be a Ramp 4 folder in there. And we're going to create a new template called Ramp 4 Pavement with Shoulders. It's going to look something like this when we create it. So let's go out and do that now. So I've got the drawing pulled up. So we're going to go up here into Open Roads Modeling. We're going to go down to the Corridors area. The Create portion of the ribbon. And then we're going to click on the Create Template. That's going to open up the MoDOT ITL if this is the first time that you've been in uh, the program today. If you did Exercise 4 and have just moved on to Exercise 5, it should open up your ITL. In this case, we're going to go up and uh, do a file open. And we're going to open up under data 4, we're going to open up the j5p3181.itl. Okay, so we're going to open that up and as you can see, the last one that we worked on here was under ramp 4, ramp 4 pavement with curb and gutter. So I'm going to slide that out just a little. And we're going to create a new one under ramp 4. So we're going to right click on ramp 4 and do a new template. And this one's going to be called ramp 4 pavement with shoulder. You can see at the top here, that's the one that we're, we're editing. Okay, let's take a look at the, what this template has in it and what's different about it. First of all, we'll be setting up our dynamic settings just like we did in Chapter 4, Exercise 4, which is applying fixes, setting our steps to point 1, and setting up our left and right prefixes. So let's take a look at doing that. So we'll go back into our create template here and we're going to go under the tools pull down. Uh, go to dynamic settings here. We're going to set our steps to point one and point one. Okay, we're going to turn on the apply fixes. And then I'm also going to go up here under tools options and we're going to set our left and right prefixes the LT underscore and the RT underscore okay once you have those set like that you can click OK and we have now our dynamic settings box set up uh, along with our apply fixes okay this is going to like I said be very similar to what we just did with the curb and gutter we're going to do a ramp to pavement with shoulders. So we're going to do the same type of thing. We're going to modify the pavement width to 18 feet. We're going to have the pavement slope downward to the right at 2%. We're going to have the left shoulder slope downward to the right at 2% using a vector offset. So that's a little different than what we've done. We're going to bring in the cut wall and we're going to merge in that uh, left retaining wall lower ground tie just like we did and we're going to put that on the concrete TO EOS shoulder point. Okay, so we're going to do that just like we did dragging it from the uh, preview pane down below. 
We're going to remove that left retaining wall upper ground. We're going to place a type A gutter six inches down from the outside of the cut wall. So this is all a lot like what we did before. Adjust the back slope to be a negative 100% and save the template library. Okay, so here's the components down here we're going to look at. Concrete pavement with ag base that's going to be on the left. And again, we're not going to adjust the width of this one. Um, I'm sorry, the depth of this one. We're going to adjust only the width of it. So we've got the 18 feet we're going to change with this concrete pavement, but we're going to leave the depth the same as it comes across. So let's go look for concrete pavement with ag base. Down here at the bottom it should tell you that's under components, pavement new, pavement only concrete. Okay, and this will be on the left side. So here's our origin point. So we're going to go to the components, pavement new, pavement only. We're doing a concrete pavement and we've got the concrete pavement with ag base right here. You can see it in the preview window. So we're going to drag that out here and I need it to go to the left so I'm going to right click as I'm dragging and click on reflect. And we're going to place that here at zero zero. The thing it said it wanted was an 18 foot lane. Uh, currently we're at 12 foot. And if you let your mouse rest on these points, it's going to tell you uh, information about those points or about that component. We're going to double click on the one out on the left and we're going to change that to 18 and apply. And I believe it said it also wanted it to go down 2%. So we'll put a negative 2% and apply that. Okay, so we made those two changes to this one, the negative 2% for the slope and then negative 18 for the horizontal. Okay, if we take a look at that, that takes care of A for our notes and the pavement slope downward to the right at 2%. So we took care of both of those first two. The left shoulder is going to slope downward to the right at 2% using a vector offset. So that's going to be a little bit different. So let's put this left side A2 shoulder concrete option 1 with ag base. And it says that it is down here near a components, shoulders, concrete without curb. Okay. So we'll close up the pavement new. Come down in here to shoulders. There's a concrete without curb. There should be an A2 shoulder concrete option 1 with ag base. Let's just double check that. A2 shoulder concrete option 1 with ag base. So that's the one that we want. Okay. We already pretty much have reflect on, so it's going to put it on the correct side, which is the left. And we're going to attach that to the left concrete TEOP. And when it says it wants to use a vector offset, over here on the left hand side right now, this slope looks like it's going down at 2%. And we want it to go the other direction, but we want it to follow this slope right here. So whatever this slope happens to be, this one is also going to mimic that. And you basically have two parent points. So whatever goes from concrete TCL as a slope to the left concrete TEOP, whatever that is, I also want this shoulder to be, so it'll always follow it. And what's good about that is if we ever do parametric constraints with this, where we tell it uh, over a certain station range I want the slope to change, this one will also change because it's based on those two points. So if we double click on this left concrete T O E O S, you can see right now it's sitting in there with a slope. So horizontal and negative four feet and our slope is at two two percent. So we're going to change that slope to a vector offset. Okay, the points that we're going to uh, use as parent points to control this vector offset is going to be this concrete TCL and the left conch TEOP. 
So we're going to use these little buttons here, the pick buttons, next to parent 1 and parent 2. So I'm going to click on that little pick button. We're going to pick on concrete TCL, and that fills in the parent. The next parent, we're going to hit the little pick button. Left concrete T EOP, we're going to left click on it. Okay, and it's giving you a value of what it is right now. So this slope right here and then the down slope, that's the difference that it's showing right now. We want that to be always even with that or at the same slope as this. So our value, let me slide that up just a little for you, our value will be zero. Okay, because we don't want it to come off of that above or below. We want it to be zero right on it. So we're going to apply that. And you'll see it'll move up. And now you've got really one constant slope from the center line all the way out to the edge of shoulder. Okay, so we can, we can apply and close that. Take a look at our document that we have out here. Um, the next thing then, I'm going to go ahead and put in the right side, the A2 shoulder. Um, we've got the same stuff over on the right side. So we've got an A2 shoulder, concrete option one, ag base. And then we've got a sidewalk with an inner and an outer buffer. Okay. So down here at the bottom, it tells us that we our shoulder is in the same spot because it's the same shoulder we just used. And our sidewalk is going to be under the sidewalk. So let's take a look at putting those in. So we're going to drag out the A2 shoulders concrete option one with ag base and you'll see that it's trying to put it on the left. So we're going to right click and turn off the reflect. And then we're going to go drop that off at the center line. That point will turn white and we can left click to place it. Okay, the next thing then is that uh, sidewalk. So we're going to close up the shoulders, open up the sidewalk, and this one's got an inner and an outer buffer. So we're going to drag this one out. You can see that it's got green space on both sides of this one. And we're going to drop this off at the right concrete T-O-E-O-S. So right there at the edge of shoulder, we're going to drop that one off. Okay, that takes care of the right side except for our in conditions, which we'll come back to our in conditions and do that on both sides here after we get our backbone created. So on the left side now we've got a cut wall, case 5, use existing ground, no profiles exist. So we're going to do that same thing, only this time, well it's not really this time, every time on in our exercises we're dragging this from our preview window from that left retaining wall lower ground tie point. So we're going to do this like we did in exercise four. I'll close up sidewalk and we'll go to retaining wall. We got a cut wall and we've got this case five here. As you can see, it pulls it up in the preview window down there on the bottom. If you did exercise four, it's going to go ahead and have uh, that point already selected down here. Okay, and we want to attach this onto our backbone and it says put that on the left concrete T O E O S. So the edge of shoulder point, that's where we're going to put that tie point. Okay, so we're going to do it from the preview window. We're going to left click and pull that out here and drop it off right here at the edge of shoulder. I'm going to go ahead and fit view this window. And you can see that this is what we have going currently. take a look at what's next. We're going to remove the left retaining wall upper ground component. Here's the left retaining wall upper ground. That's the little uh, slope over here to the left hand side. So we're going to left click on the actual component, right click, and delete component. All right, that gets us to our next option here. It says we're going to place the type A gutter six inches down from the cut wall. 
Okay, that way if the wall goes up or down, this gutter is going to always be six inches from the top. So we got a gutter type A, and that is going to be in your components, curb and or gutter. The way that we did this before and we'll do this time is we're going to go to that curb and or gutter components on the left. There's a gutter type A. and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit over here to this left side of our wall at the top. We're going to drag that out and we want to reflect that to where it goes on the left side. So we're going to drag it out, right click, hit reflect and we're just going to place it out here on the left side. Then basically all we're going to do here is we're going to control that green point which is going to control all the rest of the points on this gutter. So we're going to double click on the green point. And currently since it's green it has no constraints. So we're going to apply those constraints. We're going to tell it that the first constraint is going to be your horizontal. We've got parent one, their little pick point out to the right. We're going to hit the little pick point and we're going to go to the very top left corner of our retaining wall. Okay. We want that to be right on that point horizontally. So we'll do a zero here for our value and apply it. That'll bring it over to the edge right here. So basically off this point we're not left or right of that point. We're zero horizontal. Now we need to constraint two. We're going to make it vertical. We're going to use that same point left retaining wall T. So use the pick point and left click on that point. So those two should match there. And then we're going down 0 0.5. So negative 0 0.5 and apply that. And that will turn that point red be 0.5 or half a foot or 6 inches below the top of the retaining wall. And how this works is this middle point of your retaining wall controls these outside points. So if I were to look at that, double click on that point, you can see right here on the right side the constraint we're projecting to a surface which is going to be our active existing ground. We also have a parametric constraint assigned to it to where we can control that height. So if you needed to be at a certain height from the active ground, you could do that. You could change that wall height with a parametric constraint. But right now, anywhere that this hits existing ground, it's going to go up or down and attach that, which is going to cause these two points to move up and down with it, which is also going to cause this gutter to move with this left retaining wall up and down. So it's always going to be based on this one point right here. Okay, so that's placed in there. So that gets our left side backbone and our right side backbone completed. So now we need to do our end conditions. And on the left hand side, we've got a ditch back slope that we're going to place. Ditch back slope 1 at a 4 to 1. And then we're going to modify it to be a negative 100%. So let's get the ditch back slope. And that will be under your end conditions portion. So let's take a look at that. So we're going to close up the curb and or gutter. We're going to go down to the end conditions. We're going to go to ditches. And we're replacing this ditch back slope 1, 4 to 1. So we're going to left click on it and hold, pull it out. It is already on the left side. If not, we'd have to reflect it. And we're going to place it at the top left of that gutter type A. So we have that. Now that point needs to be at negative 100%. So we're going to double click on the red point. You can see right now it's negative 25%. So we're going to change that slope to negative 100. And we'll hit apply. Okay, after we apply that, it'll move it to the slope that we're looking for. And we can hit close. If we fit view. Uh, we're getting close now to being completed. What we need to do is that right side. So the right side has a, 
a regular ditch and then a fill slope one four to one so let's do that so over here on the right side we're gonna have to turn off that reflect because we did everything on the left side so on this right side we've got a ditch we're gonna slide it out and you'll see that it tries to put it on the left we're gonna right click turn off the reflect and we're gonna put it out at that right sidewalk outer buffer we fit the view on that now you can see we've got the the ditch out there okay then we also want to fill slope so I'll close up the ditches open up fill slope and we've got a four to one over here on the right so we're gonna grab that bring it out put it at the outer buffer point and now we've got our right fill slope so on the right we'll either have a ditch or we'll have a fill slope more than likely if our existing ground is up higher over here we're gonna end up with a ditch but it's possible that maybe the existing ground comes down below it and then we'll get a fill slope the last thing that we typically do here we'll hit this test button and we can come out here and see what the active terrain model does for us if if it's at a certain elevation so we'll hit the draw button and depending on where existing ground is you'll see that our gutter and our wall will raise up and if we go below all of that we'll have a fill slope on the right okay there's no priority uh, problems whenever you drag things out from the MoDOT component list priorities are already given to those uh, end conditions if you want to change them all you have to do is double click on those end conditions and change them so we'll close out of that and what I mean by that is each one of these here's a ditch if you double click on the ditch component it's got a priority of one set there if you double click on the fill slope it's got a priority of two so that's the way it's set up in our system already if you wanted to switch that where you always wanted a fill slope for the most part and in certain situations you can have a ditch you can switch those uh, but this is typically how how we have our set up okay. once you get that we'll go out here in our document and double check that we have everything looks like we have everything there and this is what it looks like and this is what ours looks like as well so our last step then is to save that template library so we're going to go out and do that go to the create template tool and we'll just do a file save and that will save this new shoulder ramp 4 to our ITL